Yes. Yes. You know, the, um, and what I would say is, and understand, you know, in this time of coronavirus, COVID-19 concern over the health of attendees who are often of an age which contracting the virus may pose significant personal health issues, we have to adapt. In short, we've been inflicted by another plague. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and what I've tried, what I tried to do is uh, there is no right or wrong way to do a virtual Seder since we've not had the ability, never had the ability and nor the need to do such. And as I, I mentioned before, most Jewish ritual observance developed over significant periods of time and two, three weeks in Judaism is not considered a significant period of time. Uh, and your family ideas are what is important. Um, on my wife's side, a, a quick aside, the, um, we're probably the most religious, and I assure you we're not religious, although we do keep a kosher home and I spend uh, a disproportionate amount of time at shul. The, uh, most of her family really doesn't care. The, uh, and so although we do it, about 10 years ago, we, we uh, went to the 30 minute Seder, 30 minute Haggadah, uh, and um, elaboration. I'll just call for one second. I'm going to Alan, mute, everybody. Can you mute everybody, please. I'll unmute you. Hold on, hold on, please. Just give me a second. Sure. Okay, Alan, okay. you're unmuted. Okay, great. Thus, your ideas are welcomed, encouraged, and appreciated. Uh, and um, uh, whether or not you've been accepted to rabbinical school, you can contribute. The, uh, uh, let's see. This presentation assumes the following. Family and guests have some technical skills. They have a computer or tablet. They can download or install an application and then launch it from the link provided with your email to them. And obviously, while traditionally you would you might call up to invite people for Seder, the, the way this works the best is you send them an email. Um, since they don't expect you to provide all the food, special or otherwise, which is part of the Seder experience, you'll probably have a, a flusher bank account. Um, they may need to do some preparation. Uh, that's what my sister and I were talking about today. You know, the, uh, depending on the length of the Seder you want, you might need a Zoom account. The free account, and that's at www.zoom.com, allows for a 40-minute Seder. And that's from 40 minutes from the time the first person logs on. Now, one of our international... Alan, Alan excuse yes. me for a minute. I, I believe Alan, I believe the link is .us. .us, okay. The, um, if, if you do come, it will take you to the U.S. The, the first thing, a free account allows for a 40-minute, um, uh, but one of our past international presidents who has used the free account for a number of group events said he got an email from Zoom that at least for the, the current while allows him somewhat unlimited. But even if you were to have to, to purchase a one month monthly pass, which is $14.99 a month, allows for the Seder to be as long as you wish. And uh, obviously when I was talking to my son, uh, he said he has a Zoom account so that, you know, the, uh, even though I was ready to, to, purchase, to purchase a link. The, um, the program, which I suggest that you use, primarily because it does a very good job. We were trying, a number of the leadership were trying, after we had gone through a, a Zoom call, the leadership has a, 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 a weekly meeting, uh, and we tried to do it on Facebook, and part of the problem is depending on the strength of each individual links, while it may show you and allow and hear you, uh, it may not show your your picture. And uh, that's what I was having the three other people. I could see their their pictures. You know, it was it was obviously their videos, but I was merely a uh, an AK 
Um, uh, the, as I said, we, FJMC uses Zoom and lots of business use Zoom. And it's, uh, it's a wonderful way for these group things. And as I, you know, the, as I, I mentioned uh, to my uh, sister, I said, you know, the, from the, the savings, not that you want to do this, but the savings between wine and food, um, you can more than easily afford fifteen dollars for the 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 seder. The uh, I I wish I wish food or wine only cost that little. Um, structure of the service. Um, the uh, obviously the sooner you get an invite out. Alan, yes. Can I, can I just add a tech, sure. Can I just add a technical point? So um, I've had the free account for some time. So what I do if I'm having a meeting that I think it's going to run longer than 40 minutes, I just schedule two Zoom meetings back to back. Uh, so th it is a little inconvenient because it'll knock you off after 40 minutes, but then every, and it, but everybody you connect and then you're back in for another 40 minutes. So if you don't mind doing that, then you can still use the free. Okay. I have to add that. I, that's a great. That's a great idea. You know the um, um, the uh, now obviously the Haggadah is the in terms of the structure for the service is would be your first choice, uh, but unlike a traditional seder where where you may have you know twelve, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty copies at one time we had what was it. Uh, our largest seder of a number of years ago was 45 people. The uh, and um, what was it? Many years ago, Empire uh, Empire um, Chicken and all Empire Poultry used to. If you if you would send in the cop the uh, the the metal uh, uh, tags, you for every three you could get a a copy of a, a free copy of the um, uh, what was it? The art scroll. Uh, Haggadah. And so I think we had 50 copies. The, that's when we ate lots of chicken. The, uh, but, you know, you, since you're not going to be able to pass out those seders, you know, um, mailing copies of them doesn't seem like a good option. So here's the, the options that you can do. Maxwell House Haggadah. The uh, many, if not most of the grocery stores near you, if they carry Maxwell House, and they have at least at least a small Jewish population will have copies of the Haggadah available for free, ostensibly if you purchase coffee. My brother, a number of years ago, went to the local grocery store and he asked them if he could get a few copies. And this was prior to Pesach. And the manager of the store says every year they have to throw out many copies, so please take as many as you'd like. So that, that's one option for you. The, uh, there is another, the 60 minute Seder. This is something that we downloaded. Um, and he, we've been using it for more than five years. It's probably closer to 10. And it provides the basic structure, the, uh, which we supplement usually much to the chagrin of many of our guests who, who repeat at least four times the major question that many people going to the Seder is, when do we eat? The, um, or you can create your own. And there are many sites that can uh, lead you to creating your own. And all you really need is, you know, the basic structure. Even though we use the 60 minute Seder and we probably got 50 copies of that uh, photocopied and bound. The, the reality is that we, we add a lot of additional material. The, uh, uh, and creating your own doesn't stop you from sending out a reading to a guest. Even if you don't have a, your own Haggadah, you know what the structure of the service is. Uh, there are, because we've done it for years, there are lots of new takes on the same subject. You know, uh, and this is a way you can scan it, might be a PDF and, and uh, with detailed specific of what you want to do. Whoops. Alan? Yes. Um, 
there is on our on the FJMC website there we had a torch award that was one to that created their own Okay. Can, can we circulate? That. It's really good. I, I checked for the sixty minutes Seder while uh, while I was listening to you, Alan. Yes. And it looks like it's a paperback uh, or, no. or certainly something that asserts to be under copyright. Well, no, there is a there is a there is a PDF that is available, uh, and uh, you can you can you can purchase you can purchase the PDF. So there, you know the uh, you know it, you don't have to buy a, a paperback copy of it. The uh, it's a thirty minute seder. I'll be glad to send the link at the end of the presentation. The uh, I'll I'll have my email address, and if you want any information. You know, I'll be glad, send me a thing saying, you know, just entitled Virtual Seder and I will send you, I will clutter your e email box with much material. I would like that, I, I'm a little less comfortable with, with circulating something that's an ebook because that is sort of a copyright violation. Right, right, I'm not right. I don't cares, but uh, it's a copyright violation. Right. Uh, but if we have, I, there's certainly, I think, I, I I suspect I can I have a bunch of very old Seder uh, uh, Seder scripts from historical times right. that are certainly out of copyright by a couple of millennium. Um, right. And the uh, uh, however, if, if anybody has links to a modern one uh, that's that's you know legal to send around, yes, I'd sure like to share that. Sure, There's also a Hagadot.com. Right. Yeah. And there, there are there are many sites which now have created their own Haggadah. I think I uh, downloaded uh, two or three within the the past week. Where G downloaded, and if you know if people want to use that, and since it's a PDF, if someone, depending on the family, if they have tablets, the the Haggadah can you know be read on their uh, their tablet. Um, I just recently got uh, uh, Haggadah from Jubalong.com. Okay, yes. And adapted it with other sources, uh, you know, <coughs> cut and pasting from Haggadot.com as well. Right. You know, I always spell it Haggadot because I just spelled Haggadot the way I would spell it with a TH on the end and I got nothing. H-A-G-G-A-D-O-T uh, or maybe Haggadah.com. I'm not sure which one. I don't remember. You were right if, anybody, if anybody wants, oh, there we go. No, God. I'm pretty sure it's Haggadah. There's Haggadah.com is, is a website that's for sale. The, um, but yeah, Maybe we can we don't need to take bandwidth for this. If so, if we right. can, yeah, yeah we can, I can, we afterwards. can, yeah, we can, we can do chat. that afterwards and uh, provide you with as many links. And, you know, the, the links are all basically, I, I don't want to say open source, but the reason they're distributing them is they're, that people want to use them, you know, what people want them to be used. The, uh, 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 and, you know, obviously the, uh, you know, to the extent and to the extent that your Seder can add some levity, the, uh, to the situation, it will be most appreciated. For example, and it doesn't relate to, to um, a virtual Seder, but every year at my uh, at my brother's Seder, when he, we get to the portion of, uh, of all the things that God has, is doing, uh, uh, when we get to I and not uh, fiery aim, so I would speak in a very deep voice as if it was the, the, uh, the voice of God. And uh, it would add a little levity to the Seder, which is always appreciated. The four cups of wine. I think that's easy enough for most households to uh, supply their own libation. Um, and then you don't have to worry of it if, to the extent that it matters to you. You don't have to worry about the, the hecture. Um, I, I looked at the Seder plate um, and uh, that's where you can be creative as well. Everyone should be able to have an egg, parsley, or they could substitute a different green vegetable. Shank bone, the, um, as it shows on the the slide when we have uh, 25 to 45 people we'll have we'll have four different seder plates prepared um and uh in lieu of four shank bones what i do is i print up sheets of paper that show this link 
of shankbone.org. It's a non-existent organization. USA, Maryland, and Resnick family. So that, uh, and people, people, it ends a little humor. And gee, not everybody's going to go out, if particularly if they're participating virtually uh, to get a shank bone. Uh, so that, that's, that's a way to, to do it. Charoset. And um, traditionally in my family, about 15 years ago, bored by the traditional Ashkenazi uh, taste of uh, nut, fruits, and, uh, you know, the traditional Ashkenazi charosis, I'll usually prepare four or five different, primarily Sephardic recipes. The, uh, and, you know, the question that you always ask when you're doing a virtual Seder is while you may, uh, you may prepare many of these things, whether other people will potentially uh, be willing to prepare. So one of the things that uh, uh, I thought of is uh, uh, a little almond butter with a pinch of cinnamon or nutmeg might make a an interesting and easy uh, non-traditional uh, harosa. The uh, oh, let me. The uh, whoops. Um, Crane, uh, horseradish, that is something that is relatively easily available within the, uh, uh, the, uh, the grocery stores. You know, because I'm also thinking, gee, while my family, you know, my table may have uh, the traditional Seder plate, the question is how will the other virtual guests uh, be willing or able to have it without uh, uh, going through a great deal of effort. You know, one of the things that if you really want to do it um, uh, right, there's nothing in that would stop you from including a number of recipes or particular um, items that might be special to you, uh, to your Seder, uh, with your invitation. Um, you know, the uh, I've done that at other holidays. Um, the uh, obviously with with the you know the structure of the service is the structure of the service now one of the things that uh uh four cups of wine the uh now as i you know the uh the haroset because that is something that is so different than than what most people will be what most jewish or non-jewish households will be eating during the year there is, uh, beyond the traditional, you can tune in to my webinar about Kharoset, which is next uh, week. And uh, I'll have a number of uh, uh, non-traditional uh, Kharoset, which uh, anybody can make and I make. Um, the Seder plate continue, grain, bitter herb, or if they don't, if they don't wanna go out to, um, to, uh, to buy a bottle of uh, horseradish, uh, sprinkle some hot sauce into a piece of celery or other vegetable, you know, the, uh, so that they can, you know, uh, they can get the, the impression. Depending on the, you know, uh, depending on the creativity of the guest, ask them to be creative. And when you're describing the items, ask them what they used as part of the, this virtual Seder. Because what you really want to do is, not lead the Seder, but lead a, uh, a group experience. The, um, one of the more interesting things, and I have used this at a, every three, four years with my own Seder, is Joan Nathan in her um, uh, cookbook, Jewish Food in America, has two stories about Civil War soldiers and wishing to, um, uh, relating to Passover, and particularly the one about um, uh, Union soldiers wanting to celebrate Passover. They ask their commanding officer what they can do uh, well enough in advance. And so he ordered from Cleveland a, a uh, what was it, a barrel of matzah came. Within the, the barrel were a number of Haggadot, but obviously they had, uh, they had to create a Seder plate here on the battlefield. And so they couldn't make haroset. So what they did is they found a brick and placed the brick on the Seder plate, the, or on the plate, because they really had no Seder, a special Seder plate. 
because obviously the croset represents the bricks. Um, they, uh, they couldn't find crane, so they found a, 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 an herb, really it was a, a weed that as they mentioned was as bitter as anything that the Israelis had uh, or the Israelites had ever tasted. You know, the, uh, so they, they got creative in the middle of war. Uh, and that, you know, I know that uh, uh, the other story relates to that Joe Nathan has in her cookbook relates to uh, a, a, Jew a Jewish Union soldier uh, walking through the streets of Atlanta after the Union Army had, uh, had uh, conquered it. And he, he walks past the house and he starts smelling. Uh, and what he was smelling was probably chicken soup that was being prepared. And uh, the little boy out front goes uh, running into the house and talks about, Mammy, there's some, you know, uh, Union Jew outside. And so what did she do? But she invited him to the Passover Seder that night. The, uh, and uh, I think they're wonderful things. You know, obviously the meal, to the extent possible, if you feel comfortable, send recipes of some of your family signature dishes for Passover um, uh, with the invitation so that participants, if they're willing to cook, have a time to get the ingredients and cook them the, uh, so that they'll at least have that uh, taste for them. Uh, and the most important thing of any virtual Seder is encourage participation obviously with the songs, the telling of the plagues. Obviously we can add an 11th plague of today, you know, COVID-19, uh, ask, ask questions about the, the uh, participants' favorite Passover memory or favorite Passover food, most memorable Passover Seder, the importance of making memories, favorite parts of the Passover Seder. Uh, one year, uh, years ago when there were uh, more of the older generation. We ask them, since this is, we tell the story of the, uh, our ancestors' departure from Egypt to Eretz Yisrael, or what, what became there. The, um, I asked each of those that had literally uh, come from the old country to America and to talk about that, uh, that memory. The, uh, and anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, anything that causes people uh, to talk so that you're not just leading them um, separately alone. The, uh, and this list is not um, exclusive. And, and, uh, finding the afikomen. You know, as I was trying to figure out and I was looking on the internet, you know, the uh, how can we do that? You know, the, um, um, an internet word search or where's Waldo style picture or a Wikipedia hunt. Uh, and as the, there was one thing that said it would be a easy to Venmo the prize to the finder. And now I have started to create a word search that includes both Afi Komen as well as a number of, um, of other Passover related words. And I will be glad uh, to send that out to anybody that asks. You know, it's, uh, uh, and as I said, I'm working on this, you know, the, uh, and it also does include Afi Komen. The, uh, there's, I mean, yeah. go ahead. I, I, I'm very simple, I'm asking. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> You know, the, the, uh, the, the now grown children might like that one, where right, right, really wants right. to find the Afikomen anymore. Right, right. Well, but it, part, of, part of the thing is you're no longer together. You know, the, um, you know, the, um, that by technology, you're at least able to have some semblance of togetherness. And if you can create special memories regarding this, hopefully this will be the one and only time within our lifetime and our children's lifetime and maybe our children's uh, children that you have to, we have to have a, a virtual seder you know the um, there are other information gathering opportunities uh, this coming thursday at 8:30 rabbi chuck simon will be talking about seder options in this time of a plague the the reality is unfortunately probably during those times a virtual seder was not a viable option 
And next Thursday, I'll be, as I said, I'll be giving a presentation, spicing up your Hiroset beyond the traditional Ashkenazi. Obviously, you need to check the FJMC website for the Zoom link. And um, it took, I have to say, it took about three years doing the, uh, gee, there were five Hiroset, but none of them were the traditional one that I grew up with and most of the people had grown up with. And it took a number of years to, uh, to finally, oh, gee, this is really interesting. And we would have a, you know, we would create a, a paper, a ballot, gee, tell us which is your favorite. Uh, the, uh, and it would be interesting that once people started to do this, that, oh, you know, this is really delicious. Um, we made, for my daughter-in-law, who's got uh, a Cuban ancestry, uh, we made a Cuban uh, individual balls. With, I remember there was coconut. The, uh, there was a, uh, a course that I took. Washington used to do a, a day of Jewish learning. And uh, when, they, when they had more, we'll say, uh, less, less uh, thought-provoking things, they used to do a number of uh, classes for, uh, for, for women or people that were really artsy-fartsy. And I used to be the only male in the cooking classes or the arts and crafts classes and as a as a regard to the food class there was a recipe that has been a standard one that includes neither nuts nor spices and is delicious a turkish one so alan? the uh, yes alan i i can see based on what you're presenting that there's some really interesting ideas one of the things i see is uh, right after this i'm going to put a, a spreadsheet together and assign the various families that we have uh, to sign up for it, encourage them to do that. And I think there's a political aspect to it because with four families, they, uh, we have to pick out a night where it's actually going to be uh, favorable for everybody to jump in and, and get together and be with us. So it's either the first or the second, and then they have to go to their in-laws. So uh, right. what I think uh, with the... We're going to have to figure out which Seder is the one that's going to be the strong virtual one and then let everybody sign up for it. And uh, when we open the door for uh, Eliyahu, hope that nobody actually comes through the door. Right, right. The, uh, and, and then if they do, uh, okay, uh, touch elbows. The, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> listen, you know, many years ago when I was single, there was a, a group that I helped get started as a result of a, uh, United Jewish Appeal Federation Young Leadership in Washington. Uh, that's how I met my wife. Uh, and uh, we will be celebrating our 40th anniversary uh, uh, later this spring. And as I frequently say, so I've been paying for that, uh, that meeting for, for many years. The, uh, and uh, a group of us, you know, enjoyed uh, getting together. And so we started uh, a, a Shabbat group that was once a month. And literally, we had a third uh, Seder uh, for, for a couple of years. The, uh, and so, yeah, whichever is most convenient. And uh, um, uh, as I said, if you'll send me uh, a, um, an email and entitled it Virtual Seder the, uh, to my email address, I will be glad to send you. Now, if there's stuff that you have that you'd like to share, with others that yeah you know you you may have been too shy to to talk about you know the uh, uh, Alex Alex you have you have a uh, a rabbi in the making who is not well, uh, um, I was actually going going to uh, uh, speak up because please do um, in going back to the challenge of having a common Hagada <laughs> among multiple locations and multiple families. Um, we don't. We have a, a tradition that was started from uh, my rabbi of blessed memory who had asked us for a second night Seder if we could help him fulfill his rabbinic um, fantasy, which was to have everybody at the table have a different Haggadah. Um, and we've, we've kept that tradition alive now that my older daughter is a rabbi in Indianapolis and my younger daughter here is now a rabbinic student. Um, in six months. In six months. Well, starting this fall, um, is to continue with that tradition and have 
you know, we have a number of satyrs that we've used here in the house, the rabbinic assembly satyr, the titanic satyr, as we call it, um, a night to remember, um, as, as well as a couple of other different family um, haggadot. And we've added to that with the, um, uh, there's a women's, a, a women's haggadah. Uh, we have a graphic novel haggadah that we've added to the mix. Um, but that brings another way to um, start discussion. A, a different angle for discussion as people encounter how their version has a different viewpoint of that particular portion of the of the seder to you know step in and and bring that up and as that be have that be part of the discussion. I will I will I will um, improve this presentation by that as number one. It doesn't matter what your you know, obviously, depending on the family, there, some families to whom the, um, the, the Seder might be one of the few Jewish holidays that they celebrate, the, uh, that the fact that somebody's reading something that reads a little different than what they're reading may be very confusing. But gee, if, if, if they have no issue with that, you know, I can, I can pick up a different prayer book. And even if the the congregation is doing an english reading well basically what they're reading is very similar but not maybe not exact to what it's been translated in my cdor and so yes i think that's a great idea i will uh, i will modify this to to suggest that because it's a great right. idea and many haggad yeah. don't have um at least of the ones we've encountered have um different uh, illustrations that are used to uh, to to improve or reflect upon the the point of a certain part of the Haggadah and sharing those illustrations and how each one each each person reads what's in the illustrations is is you know adds to the fascination of of doing this comparative Haggadah style seder. Great idea because I know what is it? Uh, um, yes, uh, you know there are. Um, uh, who is it? Uh, I want to say Andrew Six S Y Z X. You know, he was a, a a Jewish artist. You know, and his Haggadah, which just recently my shul was throwing out from the library, and uh, I took it. Uh, that some of the illustrations, it was right after the war, and some of the illustrations aren't of the Egyptians, but of the Nazis when they're talking about slavery. So that great, great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, Alan, uh, Barry Ballack. I'm not Marlene, as it says on the screen. That, that's so, fine. Uh, first of all, thank you for doing this today. And, and you uh, really sparked my uh, uh, IT to resolve some of these things. So in regard to searching for the Afi Komen, um, yes. I just thought of one way of uh, virtual. Uh, I think we've all had the experience of trying to find a particular computer file yes. uh, and searching through thousands of files. Uh, you can create a folder in a shared drive like Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox and dump a zillion picture files in it with you know generic names and in one of those files could be a picture file of matzah and Great only idea. give access only give access to the folder to the kids attending your virtual seder and their mission is to try to find the picture of the matzah in all the other files and there you have it <laughs> wonderful you know uh, you're looking uh, you're looking for a creative way to tell a story that um, uh, all too frequently has gotten, you know, may have gotten stale. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a wonderful way that, you know, you never thought about when uh, all you did is you, you broke the middle mox in half and you put it in, what was it? We have a, uh, an Afi Komen bag that I think my grandmother on my father's side received from some, <laughs> some uh, yeshiva in Israel, you know, probably uh, shortly after the establishment of the state, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, and about the only thing that the kids really want to do is they want to get uh, uh, paid for the prize of finding it. 
but great idea, great idea. And if any of you have additional ideas, whether you want to share them uh, during this presentation or say, gee, I thought of the following, you know, I don't have to get the, the email out. I'll get it out tomorrow so that I can uh, make sure that I receive yours and include it in the, uh, an email. Uh, yeah, be creative. You know, the, uh, uh, that, that, that's great. You know, the, uh, the, the picture of the, the Afikoma um, in the, the shared Google Drive. Any, any other ideas or suggestions? Not particularly, not particularly for Afikoma, uh, but uh, just hope everybody should look at the chat. Um, some of us have posted links. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, our adults love the, uh, the uh, Passover bingo from the International Kiddish Club. Okay. I put a link on the uh, on the chat for that, and um, I also uh, I was going to say I I'm thinking of doing something. I might have to get in touch with Alan uh, because there are so many great Passover uh, parodies of of songs, and I've been collecting them, uh, and I might do something uh, before Passover. Alan, do you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I will set up a time for that to do like a sing along or something, and I can put the songs up. Right, you know the, uh, uh, you know, while while all of us are probably in the situation of regretting that, particularly, you know, when when the tradition has been that we've we've made uh, seder and we look forward to it for many months, e even though uh, frequently the preparation uh, may be exhausting, and then all of a sudden you're saying, well, gee, we're not going to have those people. You know, we're not going to have that family together. You know, how can we do it so that, gee, all those, particularly our children, and if we're lucky enough to have grandchildren, uh, and even our even our our contemporaries, you know, siblings, will be able to say after it's over, you know, that was really a great uh, experience. You know, thank you, thank you, you know. A lot of trepidation, but gee, it really turned out much better than I thought it uh, could possibly be. Any any other? Hi, this is Steve Pilchik. How are you? Hi there, please. Uh, two, two things. One, um, I was on the, the, the call last night and listened to, to Alan Budman's presentation, but I didn't see it up on the FJMC webpage. So I'm asking if you could check that that one and this one both there for others to rewatch. Sure. And secondly, can you um, put up your? Oh, there it is. Your email address again. I was just. Of course. The um, and the I know that the uh, if Alan Budman and I will talk and um, you know the uh, and we'll make sure to get all the uh, the presentations even if it means that. I was, I had been webmaster for many years, so I still have administrative rights. Uh, so, and I, I believe, and I, I do have the, 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 uh, the log on for uh, the training, the Yahoo, not the Yahoo YouTube site. So yes, we can, we can do that. We'll be glad to do that. Uh, and as I said, as a result of many of the things that you said, when I redo this, you know, the, uh, since this is, uh, since even if the, the, the tradition is now for next week when I do this again, we've given four weeks thought to it so that, gee, this MinCog may be different. I'll be obviously incorporating all the ideas that you can suggest. And if people that you, you know that didn't have an opportunity to log on to think about it, want to, to watch it next time, even though it'll be, you know, it'll be a little different, uh, please do. Anybody have anything else? Yeah, Alan, I do have a word search. Great. So I send it I, to me. Send it to sure. me so I can include it. You know, the uh, I figure, gee, since I I couldn't find one online, so I started trying to started to create it, and you know, I said, okay, wait a second. You know, after I can fit in all the words that I want to fit in. You know, and it's adding the additional letters to the blank spaces so that it might be confusing. But if you've got it, that's great. 
Hi, Alan. Uh, this is Betty Golub. I'm a recently retired Jewish educator, and I will go through all my flash drives to see what I have that I would be more than happy to share for everybody. Great, great. I have always believed, what is it? Um, I remember years ago, I used to do uh, fundraising for the shul. And, uh, you know, one time the uh, during the Kol Nidre, Kol Nidre appeal pitch, you know, prior to the, they had been using the same letter for years and years. And so I looked at that and I said, yeah, I've got to change this. The, uh, and what I did is I told a, a Jewish story and you really needed to read the whole thing to get to the end to find out that basically it said, gee, you can afford to give more. And it was a story about the congregant that's complaining that his house is in the shetel, that his house is too small. So the rabbi suggests he bring the, the cow in, the chicken in, you know, the goat in, you know, and after the, uh, and I did it rather than in 12 point uh, times Roman, I think I did it in 14 point. So it was really looked very different. And I was honored when one of the members of the congregation who was an executive director of another Jewish organization saw me the Shabbat after the letter was received. And he goes, I'm stealing your letter. And I was honored. I was honored that he'd, he'd steal my letter. The, uh, because the, 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 the highest form of flattery is by emulation. And uh, so, yeah, if you've got, you've got stuff, you know, uh, please, I'd love to be able to, to, to share it uh, so that, the, the, that each of our virtual satyrs, uh, whether it's only two families getting together uh, or whether it's 20 families to getting together from the internet uh, can be a meaningful and memorable event. Alan, Alan yes. here. Um, I just want to give a note of caution because we've been doing a lot of Zoom lately, as I'm sure everyone else is. People trying to sing together doesn't work because people have different bandwidths. So <laughs> Barry Ballack, unless you can correct me, I, that's my sense. It's, so, actually, it's actually disturbing. I, well, I try it. I try it at least once, you know, the, uh, and then see, you know, I wouldn't plan an entire Seder around it but I'd try it at least once. Or the other option is singing together. Gee, have, you know, if you've got a number of uh, parody songs and you want to use a couple, you know, have one family, uh, you know, from one, uh, one, se one part of the session be the singing. So you haven't got the, if there's a lapse, time lapse, it's only with one connection. I agree with you. I think one verse at a time by sharing would be fantastic. Right. Together's right. a mess, trust me. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the best laid technology things often go uh, awry. Uh, many years ago, I don't know how many of you know, uh, knew uh, Captain Ruach, uh, Bert Fishman, uh, Ava Shalom. And um, Bert, his last presentation, I, I was honored to work with Bert on doing leadership development training for about five and a half years. Uh, and uh, he wanted to do one last one as he was uh, unfortunately getting uh, sicker. And although we recorded it, he wanted to do it live. And part of the problem is, you know, you know while a convention center may have a very robust um, uh, bandwidth, uh, Pearlstone, where we were, didn't have a robust bandwidth. And so instead of being a successful presentation, what, he should have, what we should have done is we should have allowed him to introduce. And then basically my running the videotape from a, a local uh, laptop. And because the bandwidth was, was bad, you know, instead of being a, a memorable experience, it became a... Uh, a horribly memorable experience. So yeah, that's something that can, is at least, uh, you, can, you should think about it when you're, you're doing this. Any other questions, concerns, uh, or contributions? I wanted to add along those lines that to some ex extent, the uh, disparity due to bandwidth differences uh, simulates a lot of the chaos of the actual Seder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, and I'm I'm writing that you know bandwidth simulates 
uh, actual Seder events. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, this is Alan in Brookline, Massachusetts. Um, if I may make one very important uh, suggestion, because there's one thing I really hate. Please. And, um, and that's when people are using their iPhone, if I may use that term for those who have Androids, and right. they hold it vertically, and you get a very tall but narrow picture. I think, in my personal opinion, you're watching a widescreen TV in a horizontal position, turn your phone horizontally so you can put it on a wide screen so others can see you and can see more of your surrounding. I think it makes for a more pleasing picture. Also, if I may, if you're going to use a laptop, place your laptop in the place of somebody at the table. And this way, you can look right at everybody else as if you're looking at somebody else at the table. Uh, the eye contact between two people is uh, very important, I think. And uh, those are just my, um, I don't know, my suggestions. Great suggestions. The, um, I mean, many of these small things, you know, th that's where the, um, what was it? Um, Alan Budman and I were uh, talking about uh, something that somebody had sent me something and uh, many of the ideas that they talked about were ideas that we had thought of. And I, as I said to, as he mentioned, you know, I said, but you know, even in a, even in a truckload of uh, gravel or a truckload of, uh, uh, that they'll take out of, we'll say a, a diamond mine, while most of the rock is just worthless, there may be one precious gem that one finds in there. And so uh, the, these suggestions are, are wonderful. And we'll, uh, you know, one of the wonderful things is they will be incorporated into the, the next presentation. So I thank you all. Any other questions, contributions, concerns? Where should I send my bribe money? Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Again, very well done. Be a presenter. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to be a presenter, please write to A Budman, A B U D M A N, at fjmc.org, and we will get you on. Thank you all for participating. Thank you, Alan, for presenting. Thank you. 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 Yeah. <sighs>